Well, we have just crossed the divide from basement rock that that's, makes up almost all of the east side of the Bighorns onto the high glacial moraines, where, where the thousands of foot high moraines that came off the, the top of the Bighorns sort of became a conveyor belt. And John, if you point it up there for a minute, all of that, all of those boulders, all different sizes, that's called glacial till. And there are hundreds, if not thousands of feet of that right here. And if you look down here, this is not where you would expect to find North Fork of Clear Creek. One of the three main sources of Clear Creek. But it is because it got trapped and wandered off course into these moraines. And it's because it came so close to, if you turn around now 180 degrees, just at the top, where we're seeing sunlight on the top here, not more than 200 yards, that's actually the divide between the North Fork and French Creek. French Creek never had any native water in it to speak of, a little bit, early. But what I call the miracle of Four Lakes, these guys were starving to death in, in, in the late 70s, early 1880s, down on French Creek, Sand Creek, Sales Creek, um, Johnson Creek, and there was all this water over here, and it's still an absolute mystery to me how they located it, but they found the one place, and there aren't a half dozen like this in the entire Rocky Mountains from Rio Doso up to Great Falls. They found the one place where with about 16 cases of dynamite, a mule, and a slip, and a Fresno, and, and enough months before they put in their potatoes to when they had to, had to get back, they were able to actually divert North Fork of Clear Creek into French Creek. Any water that's diverted out of its native watershed is, is called import water or export water, depending on which way you're looking at it. It's basin diversion. And there are peculiar, highly valuable rights that attend to that kind of transfer of water. And essentially what it means is that since that water never was in the basin where it's now been used for 130 years, you can transfer it back to its source and suffer zero, sh uh, zero shrink in terms of return flow. And, you know, that's, that's a zero percent shrink if, if we ever wanted to take some of the Sand Creek water and make it available for municipal or industrial uses. Uh, it's highly senior water. I think the most senior water in Lake DeSmit's 1950. And you can imagine what a little, a little bit of senior water, 1884, 1886 here, is, is worth orders of magnitude more than a lot of very, very junior water for evening things out. So that's, that's kind of the, where we are geologically. You can see, John, how, how the North Fork here is cutting its way down and out of, right here, the glacial moraine. And out there it kind of gets onto the, what you think of as the natural valley. But if you turn around over here, this is actually, you know, I'm the secretary treasurer of the Four Lakes and French Creek Ditch and Flume Company, which is diverting all this North Fork water to French Creek. This is one of the one, one of the what we call the Four Lakes ponds. And you can see we're up on a flat table here. There almost is no divide here between North Fork and French Creek. And, and these guys stumbled onto that, recognized it, and found a way to slip water out of the main creek through these little ponds and then they blew out the back of about a six foot berm at the lip of this moraine over there, further to the north, and that allowed all this stuff to drain into French Creek. That's the Four Lakes Ditch, that pretty little creek. Creek Ranch owns about 15 percent of the water we see here today because it's flowing a little better than 40 cubic feet per second. 
put another 17 CFS in here, which is normally what we would have had for the prior couple of months. It'd be just after Fourth of July now, and we would own about 40 or 50 percent of that additional 17. Yeah, that's about right. This is the escape point of the Four Lakes and French Creek Ditch and Flume Diversion. And by that I mean, when those guys back in 1884 figured this out, and it's still a miracle to me how they figured this possibility out, all they had to do, although it was huge, was take this water you see coming in through this canal, fill this canal about a hundred yards, not quite that, to the North Fork of Clear Creek. Once they got it to the escape point, this is this is French Creek watershed on this side. Or actually it's it's nobody's watershed. Over here it's kind of a by itself in the middle. But they they put it they put this water over here, it filled up these four ponds, and then they knocked the hole out of the back of the pond, the farthest most pond, about a half mile from here. They just blasted it out, six feet of glacial berm and exposed it and it just headed off like a rocket down this uh, boulder field into the French Creek watershed. And it was still tippy and that's where they had to go back in and, and if you know, ever so often we'll all mobilize and come up here and clean up the, the you know, just get the trees that have fallen in and out. And you'll see where they blasted their way to keep it etched on the French, French Creek side because all this water kept wanting to come back here in the north. Now we're going to walk around, and this is the part that they they probably did with just mules and a slip and a Fresno, and they built, Lord, and this is a pretty good sized canal here. Guys, this is the state's telemetry, and it tells us how much water is being diverted through the Four Lakes and French Creek. The diversion is just up here another 100 feet. But if you look at that dipstick, tell me what it's at right now. It's one point. Three small markers. So if, if it's 1.36 here, what did we read on the telemetry down in Buffalo? Now? This is the Four Lakes and French Creek head gate. You're looking at here at the North Fork of Clear Creek, the main Clear Creek. We turn these valves, and right now, based on the weir you just saw, we're running, what, about 45 cubic feet per second, of which eight of that, eight cubic feet per second, is going straight to Sand Creek. It's our entitlement. The unique thing about Sand Creek is that because, and, and all of this Four Lakes water is because this is a trans basin diversion out of the North Fork into the French Creek, I can, all I have to do is turn this back and I can transfer without any return flow shrink on this side all of my water. And below this is a straight shot are all the, the municipal intakes for the region and you know one of the two major intakes for all the potential industrial uses at Lake Smith. So it's it's unique water. You can't find this situation virtually anywhere. And of course I I, I don't believe we'll ever use all that. We never we, we never do any of that, but we have that ability and we can do all our part when the time comes. That's that's the unique value that's embedded from water rights. In, in Sand Creek. This is where the ranch starts. And in truth, it starts in those big ice fields that we're going to hike up to and look at in just a minute above us at the height of, height of the big one. This is where the unique part starts. This is where Sand Creek and the Four Lakes guys all become different.